You know, it seems like sometimes entertainment properties have the rotten luck of just being released at exactly the wrong time. For every Armageddon, there's a deep impact. For every Olympus has fallen, there's a White House down. And for every Elden Ring, there's a Horizon Forbidden West, a game that seems to have been largely overshadowed and sidelined by one of the biggest releases of last year. And that's a bit of a shame, really, because as I'm going to try and prove in the course of this review, Horizon Forbidden West is actually a pretty damn good game. Now, for anyone who's not familiar with the Horizon games, they're set about a thousand years in the future following a destructive war between mankind and a race of sentient machines that got out of control and turned against their former masters. It's the same story we've seen about a million times before, you might think. But the difference here is that humanity actually lost the war, getting wiped out to literally the last man, and the world was reduced to a blasted wasteland devoid of life. Fortunately though, the scientists of the time had a bit of a backup plan. Knowing that they couldn't defeat the machines in battle, their plan was instead to outlast them, using a powerful terraforming network to restore the planet's ecosystem and eventually repopulate it, with a new race of humans that could eventually rebuild civilization. The plan succeeded, kind of, but through various fuck-ups and betrayals, the humans that were released back into the world were never given the scientific, cultural and historical education that they needed. So now, they're kind of stuck in a pre-industrial level of technology, existing mostly as scattered tribes that fight for resources and territory, while hunting and battling the sentient machines that still roam the worlds. This is where we're introduced to Aloy, the main character of the series. She's an outcast from her own tribe, apparently born without parents, who one day stumbled upon a piece of ancient technology that allowed her to see and learn things that others could only dream of. The first game saw her gradually uncover the tragic history of the old world and the truth of her own origins while battling to stop sinister forces from unleashing a second destructive war against the machines. It was good stuff that made for a compelling gaming experience, so I was interested to see where the series would go next. And the answer is, well, more of the same, really. Whether you consider that a good or a bad thing depends mostly on your impression of the first game, but for the purposes of this review, allow me to elaborate. So Forbidden West is set about six months after the events of the first game, and all is not well with the worlds. The planet's ecosystem seems to be in rapid decline, causing sudden storms and droughts and all kinds of other havoc, and the normally peaceful machines roaming the landscape are infected with a mysterious blight that's making them go crazy and attack people. That's when Aloy gets a message from her frenemy Silence, telling her to head into the Western Territories, where she has to find and restore the ancient terraforming system and get the planet's ecosystem system back on track. The only problems standing in her way are the warring tribes fighting for control of the area, the hordes of deadly machines that have gone nuts, a mysterious new group armed with super advanced technology, and the fact that the terraforming system has been split up into several smaller pieces that each have to be recovered and merged together before it can be rebooted. That's the basic gist of the story. I'm not going to spoil it for you too much, so I'm not going to go into too many details, but what it basically boils down to is that you've got some overarching objectives that you have to pursue, and you're turned loose into a big open world that you can then explore at your leisure. You can choose to either pursue your mission immediately, or just take your time and look around for a while. And just like the first game, this is without doubt the strongest aspect of Forbidden West, because put simply, this is a fascinating world to explore. Whether it's towering jungles and forests, big open deserts and grasslands, or snow-covered mountain peaks, the game world is large and varied enough that there's always a good variety of locations and terrain within easy reach. And they're all made interesting to explore because everywhere you go, you'll find remnants of the old world that gradually fleshes out the backstory to the game. Whether it's fields of rusting battle tanks, their cannons still pointing towards long-forgotten enemies, or ruined settlements and crumbling skyscrapers, or ancient underground bunkers and sealed facilities where nobody's walked for a thousand years, all of them have stories to tell. Sometimes it'll be written diary entries from scientists working desperately to finish a project that might give humanity a second chance, or crackly old audio logs from soldiers making a defiant last stand against hopeless odds, or just little bits of environmental storytelling like two mummified corpses who died holding hands, drawing comfort from each other in their final moments. 
The game's littered with stuff like this, and how much of it you actually uncover depends on how much time you want to invest in exploration. Stick to the critical path and forge ahead with the main storyline, and you'll get all the big payoffs much quicker, but you'll also miss the rich narrative details that really show how much thought and creativity went into crafting the world of Horizon. Compare all this to a game like Last of Us 2, which toyed with the idea of open world gaming, but never really offered a strong incentive for exploration. Forbidden West is the kind of game where I spent whole evenings just wandering around, doing little side quests and having fun getting to know the gaming world around me. The gameplay structure itself is basically a direct port over from the previous game. You explore the world either on foot or by hijacking and taking in control of robotic animals. There's climbing and jumping sections to test your skill, timing and problem solving. Your focus device allows you to see more information about the world around you, from enemies to items and resources, so as long as you remember to use it, you probably won't miss anything important. Enemies themselves are a mix of humans and robots, and your main weapons for taking them down are spears and hunting bows. The humans are easy enough to take out, but your main opponents for the bulk of the game are going to be the robots, and this is where it gets interesting. Each type has unique attack patterns and weak points in its armour that you'll need to identify with a mixture of the focus and simple observation. Find the right spot to attack with the right weapons and ammo and let rip. The more resources and tools you gather, the more you can upgrade your weapons, skills and equipment to take on bigger and more dangerous enemies. And you'll definitely need to do it, because threats get progressively stronger the further you progress. If you fail to keep up with the difficulty curve or go in guns blazing, then you're going to be looking at the restart from checkpoint screen before you know it. That being said though, the difficulty is pitched more at filthy casuals like myself rather than hardcore gamers. It can get challenging at times, but it never really crosses into frustrating territory, so no matter how hard you make it for yourself, there's usually always a way through. There's also plenty of optional dungeons known as cauldrons that offer more challenging fights in exchange for bigger rewards, and again, it's up to you how much time you want to invest in them. Aloy generally moves and controls fine, so the climbing and jumping sections are nothing to sweat about. Sometimes the collision detection and combat doesn't always register hits, which is kind of frustrating when you're fighting for your life against tough enemies. And if I'm honest, the weapons wheel can be a kind of a fiddly interface to use in the heat of battle, especially in the later stages when you're going to have a lot of equipment to choose from. None of these are game-breaking problems, and the more you progress, the more you generally learn to overcome them. Graphically, there's absolutely nothing to complain about here. The game world looks absolutely gorgeous, the big open landscapes are a pleasure to stop and look at, the dynamic lighting and shadows all behave the way they should, and even the water effect look pretty good with absolutely no slowdown or juddering at any point. What's impressive as well is that you can fast travel basically anywhere in the world with practically no load times. Damn, even God of War needed the world tree to act as an interactive loading screen. There was a few glitches and bugs that I picked up on in the early days of release, like Aloy getting locked into a crouch animation and just kind of gliding across the screen, or her hair physics occasionally losing the plot and waving around like she had Medusa's snakes stuck to her head, but most of them were resolved with the first patch and never really cropped up again. So from a technical point of view, I can't say much against this game. In terms of the main storyline, it's generally a solid plot that adds extra layers of mystery and intrigue to the world of Horizon. You get to learn more about the Zero Dawn project and the people involved in it, and the fate of a certain antagonist from the first game. The only problem is that the answers the story eventually provides never quite live up to the promise of the questions. The arrival of a whole new faction with advanced technology should have been a complete game changer, but they kind of devolve into two-dimensional cartoon villains by the end. And the final assault against their base feels way easier than it should have been. Speaking of endings, the finale of the main storyline feels a bit rushed and simplistic compared to the carefully constructed narrative that led up to it. It's like the dev team were given about five minutes to brainstorm an idea for sequel bait and then just threw in the first thing that came to mind. And that's a shame really, because it feels like it's kind of squandering a carefully constructed build-up. I must admit though, I like how the game makes interesting observations about our own understanding of history, and how people tend to simplify and exaggerate real events to serve their own ideological purposes. Like the tribe living in the remains of an ancient museum exhibit dedicated to a long extinct military unit, and now worship each fallen soldier like they were literal gods. Or the faction who managed to recover fragments of historical records, but because they didn't get the full story, they falsely believed that a corrupt business tycoon was actually the saviour of humanity. It really gets you thinking about perspective, doesn't it? The characters could best be described as a mixed bag. On the one hand, you've got awesome, morally complex personalities like Silence, who you never quite know if you can trust. 
Ghost, or Catalo, who starts out confrontational and embittered, but gradually proves himself to be a valuable ally. But then at the other end, you've got Alva, a young historian who's just irritating as fuck. Or Varl, who fits perfectly into the unthreatening sidekick mould, a totally submissive character who never questions, challenges, or doubts the protagonist in any way, and so doesn't force them to examine their own decisions and worldview. Speaking of protagonists, there's been a lot said about Aloy since the game came out, picking apart everything from her character to her love life to her fucking facial hair. Honestly though, I think a lot of it is making something out of nothing. I never got the impression they were trying to make her into some kind of feminist power fantasy that's out to put the boys in their place. If anything, she gets regularly outmaneuvered and manipulated by people who are clearly smarter and more cunning than herself. Yeah, she's generally a bit more fiery and abrasive in the first few hours of gameplay, but if anything, I'd say her biggest shortcoming is that she's kind of lacking in personality for the remainder of the game. And that's definitely no fault of the voice actress, who does her best with the material she's been given, but Aloy's so focused on her mission that it doesn't really leave much time for anything else, so I never got a strong sense of who she actually is as a person, her strengths and weaknesses, her fears and aspirations. What sort of stuff does she get up to in her downtime? I don't fucking know because I really don't know anything about her. She kind of just says and does whatever's needed to move the plot forward, and I don't know man, it would have been nice to see her wrestling with personal hang-ups or having to make tough moral choices, or maybe even have a romantic relationship of some kind. Jesus, give the girl something to work with. I'd sort of hoped that learning more about Elizabeth Sobek, the architect of the terraforming project and the person that Aloy was directly cloned from, might have opened up new avenues for her character. Like, what if she learned that Elizabeth had a darker, more morally questionable side to her history and she had to grapple with the reality that her idol was actually a more flawed, complex and human personality than she imagines? What would that do to her belief in herself? But nah, the game's determined to hold Elizabeth up as a borderline messiah whose genius, intellect and moral perfection was let down only by the people around her. Fair enough, whatever. Ultimately though, I think Forbidden West is a game that got a bit unfairly maligned at the time it came out, partly because of a few progressive themes and character ideas woven into the narrative that probably got blown out of proportion, and partly by trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Elden Ring, which was clearly pitched at a much more serious and dedicated gaming crowd. But if you missed out on it at the time, either because you were put off by the possibility of it being another Last of Us 2, or because you'd spent your hard-earned cash on a different game, then now might be the ideal time to revisit the world of Horizon. Horizon. It's a game that gave me dozens of hours of entertainment, challenges and rewards while delivering a mostly compelling and intriguing storyline, and if you're willing to invest a bit of time and effort into it, then I'm pretty sure it'll do the same for you too. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.